Let's continue to look at these key definitions that we're covering in Chapter 1 of Pagano's Understanding Statistics. We looked at data and how to collect it and how to enter it, how to code it, and how to make composite variables. Now, let's look at one of the key words that we're going to be look, uh, we'll be using often, and that is population. A population is a complete set of individuals, objects, scores, everything that we're, we're studying. For example, if I'm studying uh, students at Azusa Pacific University, the population is every Azusa Pacific University student. That's about 10,000 students, and so that's an, an awful lot. Um, other important populations that you might uh, encounter in organizational psychology, all of the employees at a, a company, maybe all the employees in America. Um, if you're uh, working in HR and you're working on hiring, the population that you might be interested in is potential employees. Everybody who might apply, you might be thinking, oh, what, what, what can I, uh, how can I understand potential employees? Now, that would be a very undefined group. Um, there's no way that you could actually measure all of your potential employees, but conceptually, it's a group that exists. If you're involved in marketing and product design, your uh, uh, a population might be customers, all customers of your product. Or if you're into the uh, advertising and sales, the potential customers might be a population that you're interested in. So populations tend to be very large. They might not be clearly defined. And typically, they're larger than what we can actually collect data on. So because of that, we use uh, samples. And that's our third key word here. A sample is a subset of a population that's examined in order to make conclusions about the population. So if we're studying students at your university, maybe we'd study one or two classrooms. Maybe we'd make a random selection from uh, 10,000 names put into a hat. Um, and so we, we, and which makes studying the group a lot more accessible. However, if we're just studying a sample, like if I chose one class from a whole university, it might not be representative of the whole university, and that, that presents some limitations. And so we're going to look at later on how to make sure it's representative, and even if it is representative, how sure can we be about the conclusions that we'd be making about the population? Now let's look at another word, a statistic. A statistic is a number, and it's a number that's calculated from data from a sample. So statistic goes with a sample. It gives us information about the sample, and perhaps it gives us information about the population also. The most common statistic is the, uh, uh, the average, um, the uh, um, like when you, if we calculated the average age of a, of a class. And we could perhaps use the average age of a class to get estimate a range for uh, um, the, the average age for the population. Um, other statistics besides average are things like median, mode, standard deviation. And then later, we're going to see other statistics that just have letters like Z and R and T and F and chi-square. And these will uh, uh, be able to tell us about relationships and differences between groups within the sample that we're dealing with. In contrast to the sample, we have the parameter. Like a statistic, in that it describes a group of people, the, the parameter, however, is calculated from the data as a whole, from the population. So just like statistic goes with S for sample, parameter goes with population for P, it gives us information about the whole population. Now, usually we don't have enough information to know a parameter. Like we want to know the average shoe size of all APU students. That would be really difficult to get those 10,000 uh, data points, but we can make an, we can estimate parameters from statistics. Now, a sixth, a sixth uh, definition is a variable. And a variable, of course, is something that can vary. So let's, uh, let's look at an example of a study that has two variables. And uh, let's suppose that uh, 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 there's a guy and a girl. And the guy, or there's a 
we're concerned about all guys and girls. And we're looking at things from the guy's perspective. And a question that guys tend to ask is, oh, is it more likely that a girl will say yes when a guy asks her out with a text in person or by Facebook? So that's a, a, an important question for a guy because guys, like all humans, tend not to want to be rejected. So they want to ask in a way that is most likely to uh, 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 get a positive response. So uh, a variable, so the two variables here would be the mean, the way, the means by which the guy asks the girl out. For example, phone, in person, or Facebook. Um, the uh, um, the second uh, variable is her response, yes or no. And so those are examples of variables. So a variable is any property or characteristic of something that we're studying, some event, object, or person. So if we've got 45 people, we will, and we're studying two variables for each person, we would get two variables for each of those 45 people. And these, these variables can have different values depending on the conditions or the time. So that's the definition of a, a variable. Now the next definition are two types of variables. A dependent variable. A dependent variable is the result that is measured in the experiment. It's like the outcome that we're trying to figure out. It depends on the condition that are chosen at the, at the beginning, in theory, if our model or if our hypothesis is correct. For example, whether a girl says yes or not when she's asked out, that would be a dependent variable. And in contrast to the dependent variable, which is the result of what we're doing, the independent variable is a condition in the experiment chosen independently of other variables. It's what's chosen first. It's what the experimenter manipulates. Um, for example, how a girl asks a guy out, phone, in person, or by Facebook. And so uh, we... Um, uh, the uh, independent variable is controlled by the experimenter. The experimenter might say to 30 guys, ask, ask a girl out via phone, ask 30 other people, you're supposed to ask them out in person, and uh, 30 other people by uh, uh, a Facebook. And so that was the independent variable. Now, the way that you can remember the difference between the independent variable and the dependent variable, because they sound an awful lot, is that the IV comes before the DV, the independent variable, the way the guy asks her out, influences the dependent variable, the girl's response. And so you think of I coming before D, like an ID, a student ID. So you remember ID, student ID. Now you might think, oh, what is it, DI, DUI? No, no, it's not a DUI. Do not... Don't get one of those. You want the ID. The independent variable predicts a dependent variable. The independent variable comes first, and then the dependent variable. Now let's look at a, a, a practice problem from uh, the, the textbook. It says identify the independent variable, the dependent variable, the sample, the population, the data, and the statistic. And this example says, an I.O. psychologist believes that a different arrangement of the keyboard will promote faster typing. So a new keyboard might get people to type faster. 20 trainees selected from a large trade school, so that's the people that are going to participate in the study, participate in an experiment designed to test this belief. 10 of the trainees learn to type on the conventional keyboard. The other 10 are trained using the new keyboard. So 10 on the old keyboard, 10 on the new keyboard. At the end of the training period, the typing speed in words per minute of each trainee is measured. That's what we're measuring is how fast they can type. The mean typing speeds are calculated for both groups and compared to determine whether the new keyboard has an effect. So we're going to compare the two averages between the two groups. So what's the uh, independent variable? Or that's the independent variable comes before the de dependent variable. It's controlled by the experimenter. So the independent variable is which keyboard people get, the traditional keyboard or the new keyboard. That's the independent variable. The dependent variable is the outcome that's being measured, and that would be the typing speed of uh, each of the two groups. So the typing speed is the dependent variable. The sample are the people that actually participate in the study, and that would be the 20 trainees. And then the population, this one doesn't have a clear-cut 
answer the population. We could say, well, it could be everybody from the training school, from the trade school, but realistically, we'd want to make a conclusion for everybody. So maybe everybody who uses a keyboard, it would be nice if uh, we can make a conclusion about that. But it's not, the population isn't clearly defined in this problem. The data, the data are the numbers that we collect. So we collect two pieces of numbers, two pieces of data. First, which keyboard those 20 people have? Is it the traditional one or the new one? We could label those one and zero. The other is there a uh, uh, typing speed using that keyboard. Then the statistic, we would calculate two averages, the average for the group with the traditional keyboard, and then the average for the group with the uh, new keyboard. And those would be the, the statistics that we would have. We'd have two averages. So that's how we would apply these definitions to, uh, our, uh, to, a, to an example. Now let's talk about the difference between descriptive and inferential statistics. Descriptive statistics are the first part of the course that describes how the data looks. It's relatively easy and people understand it intuitively. Um, it's often what's used in businesses and churches and nonprofits because it's, it, it doesn't take uh, very sophisticated math to do. Example, suppose we were studying shoe size. We had a sample of 100 people. We could get the frequency of each shoe size, how often it occurs. We get the average shoe size. We could get the modal pop, modal shoe size, the most popular shoe size. And then we could measure how much variability there is in people's shoe sizes. That'd be the standard deviation. So those are all descriptive statistics. In contrast, we have inferential statistics, which will be the second part of this course. The, it's an analysis that's done on data from a sample to describe a whole population. So we're gonna go from a small group of people and make a conclusion about everybody. For example, if we had a sample of 20 job candidates and we wanted to make some conclusions about everybody who was likely to apply for a job, we would be using inferential statistics. Um, it tends to be much more difficult than descriptive statistics. In, in most organizations, people generally work with a stats consultant. Uh, people have specialized in statistics uh, when doing inferential statistics. But this, this course is to give you an introduction to inferential statistics so that you can be a good consumer of stats, work with people who are really gifted in stats, and perhaps be a producer of uh, inferential statistics yourself. Um, now, what do these inferential statistics actually do? What we're going to do is we're going to use special tests to draw conclusions about differences in populations or relationships between variables. For example, we might use a t-test to see that, oh, is the difference in shoe sizes between group A and group B, are they, is that what you'd expect by variation? Or is there really a difference in shoe size from the type of people that are in group A to group B? Is the difference significant? or we might check to see if uh, things are correlated. Uh, is shoe size and height correlated? Are they related or is it just kind of random and uh, if we collected some data, it's what we would expect if the data were random. So uh, uh, inferential statistics will help us test differences between groups or, or relationships between variables. Um, sometimes we can describe parameters also and we state, state them in terms of uh, confidence intervals. We are, for example, we say we're 95% sure that between 57% and 62% of APU girls prefer to be asked out in person rather than by Facebook. That would be an example of something, a conclusion that we can make on inferential statistics. So these are some key vocabulary that we'll be using throughout the course. And I hope you find this uh, course useful and uh, these lectures are uh, something that help you understand the textbook.